Hello, and Merry Christmas, and welcome to St. Columba's and our celebration of the birth of our newborn king. You'll find the bulletin for this service on our webpage, stcolumbaca.com. We invite you to download it and join in the festivities and singing of the hymns. We give special thanks for all our musicians participating in today's service. We especially want to thank Lily and Laura Lee Brown, Marjo Gardner, Lillian Travesian, and of course, Brett Hanley, our director. Also participating, we want to thank David Mitchell, Savannah Thomas, and especially Michelle Molador, who will be leading our hymns. We also thank our technical crew, Cliff Agan, Nancy Miller, Tim Helton, and Bob White. And we're so glad that you could be with us for this service. Christmas Eve, from five to six, we will be having drive-through communion, just the bread in the parking lot. If you'd like to come and receive Christmas communion that is uh, consecrated at this service, you may drive through the parking lot, follow the directions, and join us for communion between five and six. Christmas morning, Bishop Diane Bruce and her husband, Stephen Bruce, will be doing a special Christmas Day service called Christmas Around the Crèche. It will be a multilingual celebration of the nativity featuring readers and musicians from congregations around the diocese. And that will be Christmas morning at 10 o'clock. You can reach that service uh, from our website on the Diocesan Facebook page. And then on Sunday morning, Bishop Taylor will have a traditional service of lessons and carols on the Diocesan Facebook page, which will also be available from our website. So lots of Christmas opportunities for you during this holy season. Now let us sing together our opening hymn, O come, all ye faithful, verses 1, 3, and 6.
was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Oh, the Father's love begotten Ere the worlds began to be He is Alpha and Omega He the source, the ending He lesson is from Isaiah. God has revealed his glory and his great love through his relationship with his chosen people, the people of Israel. He has sent to them his son, Jesus Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest, 
as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Our second lesson this morning is from the first chapter of Luke. To a young woman, God sends the angel Gabriel to tell her what God has planned for her life. Mary submits to this call. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinarius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Ga in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is probably one of the most difficult Christmases 
we have had. In some ways, it doesn't even feel like Christmas. There's no pageant. There's no late night service with its special magic. We can't be together and sing those much beloved carols and go to Bethlehem in our minds and hearts to celebrate our Lord's birth. No, this Christmas is not like any other we've ever experienced. So what are we to do? Do we moan and kvetch about the circumstances we find ourselves in? Or do we strive to make the best of where we find ourselves and seek to help others to do the same? It's a very real question with very real possibilities. It would be so easy to give in to the feelings all around us, feelings of pessimism and anxiety. I mean, look around. There's a pandemic keeping us all safer at home. People are divided more than ever. There's hatred and anger, racism and fear. How easy to allow those feelings to overwhelm us and swallow us up. Do we give in to the Christmas darkness of fear and distrust, of hatred and anger? Or do we lean on our better angels and strive to be a light in the darkness of these difficult times? As I said, it's a very real question with very real possibilities. So let me tell you of another person who had to make a similar decision in another time of darkness and despair. It was Christmas, 1861. As the Civil War raged on, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was mired in his own personal grief of the death of his beloved wife, Fanny. Against this backdrop of war and disease and pain, now he received <coughs> word that his oldest son, Charles, who served in the Union Army, had been shot in battle and was critically wounded. And though his son would survive, Longfellow, in his grief of this news, on top of his anguish for his wife, wrote these words. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to men. I thought how, as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day, a voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill to men. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the sound of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Longfellow could very easily have given in to the grief and suffering going on in his own heart and all around him. He could have become an angry and embittered man. But instead, 
he wrote these words for the last stanza. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. Somehow he knew this widowed father of six found a way in his heart of hearts not to give in to despair, but instead to latch on to hope, the hope ringing in those bells on Christmas morning. What decision will we make? Will we let these times of disease and despair fill our hearts and rule our lives? Or will we seek another way? Let me share another example of that other way. It's one of those author unknown stories you find floating around on Facebook and the internet this time of year. And it goes like this. Last year, I vowed to make Christmas a calm and peaceful experience. I cut back on non-essential obligations, extensive card writing, endless baking, decorating, and even overspending. Yet still, I found myself exhausted, unable to appreciate the precious family moments and, of course, the true meaning of Christmas. My son, Nicholas, was in kindergarten. It was an exciting season for a six-year-old. For weeks, he'd been memorizing songs for his school's winter pageant. For weeks, I didn't have the heart to tell him that I'd be, be working the night of the production. Unwilling to miss his shining moment, I spoke with his teacher. She assured me there'd be a dress rehearsal the morning of the presentation. All the parents unable to attend that evening were welcome to come then. Fortunately, Nicholas seemed happy with the compromise. So in the morning of the dress rehearsal, I filed in 10 minutes early, found a spot on the cafeteria floor, and sat down. Around the room, I saw several other parents quietly scampering to their seats. As I waited, the students were led into the room. Each class, accompanied by their teacher, sat cross-legged on the floor. Then each group, one by one, rose to perform their song. Because the public school system had long stopped referring to the holiday as Christmas, I didn't expect anything other than fun commercial entertainment, songs of reindeer, Santa Claus, snowflakes, and good cheer. So when my son's class rose to sing Christmas Love, I was slightly taken aback by its bold title. Nicholas was aglow as were all of his classmates adorned in fuzzy mittens, red sweaters, and bright snow caps on their heads. Those in the front row, center stage, held up large letters, one by one, to spell out the title of the song. As the class would sing, C is for Christmas, a child would hold up the letter C. Then H is for happy, and on and on until each child holding up his portion had presented the complete message. Christmas love. The performance was going smoothly until suddenly we all noticed her. 
a small, quiet girl in the front row holding the letter M upside down, totally unaware her letter M appeared as a W. The audience of first through sixth graders snickered at this little one's mistake, but she had no idea they were laughing at her, so she stood tall, proudly holding her W. Although many teachers tried to shush the children, the laughter continued until the last letter was raised. And we saw it all together. A hush came over the audience and eyes began to widen. In that instant, we understood the reason we were there, why we celebrated the holiday in the first place, why even in the chaos, there was a purpose for our festivities. For when the last letter was held high, the message read loud and clear, Christ was love. And he still is. Christ was love. That's the true message of Christmas. For it was, it was for the angels and the shepherds. It was for Longfellow. And it is for you and me this night. Christ was love. You see, in Jesus, God sent God's very essence into our, our world. And that essence is love. Love is God's gift to us, God's gift at Christmas. And love is the gift that we are called to share. Another one of those sayings that pop up on Facebook that caught my eye the other day was this. After the year we've had, your Christmas gifts are the people remaining in your life. Think about that. After the year we've had, your Christmas gifts are the people remaining in your life. So then, the reverse is true. That means you are a gift, God's gift. And the gift you bring is love, God's love. So you are the gift of God's love. To share with all those you know. That's the secret of Christmas. That's how we can beat back the despair trying so hard to take over our hearts. Because Christ was love. And that has made all the difference. Let us pray. O oh God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true, true God, God from true, true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, be born in us today. Praise be to God in his great love for us. He has entered our darkness with his great light. He comes as our God and yet as a child. Lord, help us and your whole church to walk as children of the light. Teach us to see your presence in each other to be aware that what we do to each other, we do to you. We give thanks for the words spoken by the prophets, but above all, for the word made flesh dwelling among us. May your whole church proclaim this good news with joy. Lord Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, be, be born, born in us today. today. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. We pray for lasting peace in the Middle East and for Bethlehem today. Lord, give peace in the hearts of all, peace in our land, peace among the nations, peace in our homes, and peace in all our dealings. Peace through him who is the Prince of Peace. Lord Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, be, be born, born in, in us today. today. Lord Jesus, born of Mary, you are part of the human family. You share our joys and our sorrows, our hopes and our fears. Bless our homes with your loving presence. Be known to be with us, our families and our friends. Lord Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, be born, be born in, in us, us today. today. Lord Jesus Christ, you came down to lift us up. You descended that we might ascend. You became human that we would share in the divine. We pray for all who are down at this time. We remember the outcast and the refugee, the homeless peoples and the street dwellers. We pray for the lonely and those who are unloved, for all who will find this a sad day or a hard day. Lord Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, be, be born, born in us today. today. We give thanks that you have opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. We pray for loved ones departed from us, that they may be one with you in your kingdom. Lord Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, be, be born, born in, in us today. today. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the church, for our bishops, Justin, Michael, John, and Diane, for St. Columbus, the Threshold Project, our Children's Learning Center, our Project Hope Food Ministries, 
and our clergy and staff. We pray for those with immediate needs, Timmy, Sandy, Denise, Lynn, Ron, Rob, Ilana, Scott, Therese, Dana, Carrie, Robbie, Wendy, Carol, Michelle, Guy, Rob, Bill, Richard, Donna, Dick, Amy, Ted, Vicki, Judy, Ron, Lisa, Mary, Linda, Linda, Savannah, Araceli, Augustine, Lauren, Roger, Mona, John, Elise, Stephen, Terry, Val, Joyce, Ronald, Clark, Danny, Richard, Aaron, and Ken. And we pray for those who need our continuing prayers as listed in our bulletin. We give thanks for all members of our St. Columbus Parish family, and we pray for the time when we may worship in person again. We pray for the world, for all who are suffering or have died because of the coronavirus pandemic, for all victims of violence, and to turn the hearts of those who would do harm. For those affected by natural disasters, especially wildfires. For peace in the Middle East and all troubled areas of the world. For all those serving at home and abroad. Liam, Simon, Ed, Matthew, Matt, Nathan, Jonah, David, Noah, Garrett, De London, and Marty. You may now add your own petitions, either aloud or silently. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to our God for his love revealed in the word made flesh. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to our God coming among us and sharing our humanity. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to our God, filling Mary with the life of the divine. Blessing and honor and glory and power be to our God for our salvation, for bringing joy and peace into our world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet those with whom you celebrate this day.
We continue with the Eucharistic prayer as found printed in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only son, to be born for us who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember remember his his death, death. we We proclaim proclaim his his resurrection, resurrection. we await await his his coming coming in glory. glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of God, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mary and Joseph, the angels and shepherds and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of the church, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, Father, who who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as as it is is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us join together in the prayer of spiritual communion from the Armed Forces Prayer Book. In union, union, O Lord, Lord, with with your your faithful faithful people people, at at every every altar altar of your your church, church, where where the the Holy Holy Eucharist Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ, I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. the light of the Christmas star to you, the warmth of home and hearth to you, the cheer and goodwill of friends to you, the hope of a childlike heart to you, the joy of a thousand angels to you, the love of the Son and God's peace to you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.
I would be remiss if I didn't also thank our readers for today's service, John and Beverly Pearson. And we remind you that Eucharist will be available from 5 to 6 Christmas Eve evening for drive through communion. Now, go in peace to love and serve the newborn king. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.